Okay, let's have a look at this letter for prepare OET. So I'm going to um, read it as I would, as I mentioned this in my previous videos, if you've seen them on my channel. So the way to approach this, 181, the way to approach this is to think, right, imagine you are the recipient, you're the reader of this, and you don't have access to any other information, such as the case notes, for example. So you have to put yourself into the shoes of a reader. Okay? Now, I won't go through the criteria here today because I've uh, done quite a lot of videos on that and I might refer to it in later videos. But you have to go to the task, put yourself in the shoes of the reader and think, right, if this were the only piece of information the reader had, does it make sense? Does it logically tell that story, construct a narrative? So your purpose, what you want the reader to do and the narrative is explaining why. Why do you want me to do what you ask? Okay, so it's got to be logical, have a logical flow. Now, for your opening, you could either put the DOB there in the RE. What you usually do or what you can do for your patient is put name, age, occupation. So writing to refer, this is Mary Clark, aged 54, or a 54-year-old office clerk. So you can do it like, uh, so you could do uh, a 54-year-old, uh, this one, Clark, Clark. Yeah, so you could do it like, like that. So you've got name, age, occupation. Now that's a shortened version because I can't be bothered to type it out. Now you can do, I'm writing to refer, or you can include your request because it's still obviously a referral. So you could do, I'm writing to request your further investigation and assessment of Mrs. Mary Clark, 54-year-old office clerk, <laughs> Mary Clark, who is a clerk, whose signs and symptoms are suggestive of bronchogenic carcinoma. So you could do it like that. Okay? So there's more than one way, as long as your purpose is clear. But the usual convention is you know, put the DOB in the reference line or put name, age and occupation. So you could do it in the one or two ways. So purpose now is clear. You want me to investigate and assess. OK, now you have to expand it later on, which you do at the end. So that's good. Mrs. Clark presented with another for seven weeks. Right. I would have put presented with. Now, you usually put put the time with a seven week history of, so you can do it like that. So put, put the time at the start, a seven week history of, complaining with non cough for seven weeks, what, so she was complaining for seven weeks. So to make it clear, seven week history of non-productive cough with now which was associated implies a causation which we haven't yet established so what you can do is with associated so move your preposition put it there okay so today mrs clark presented with a seven week history of an unproductive cough with associated dyspnea particularly at night comma and heaviness in the chest her condition initially started with flu-like symptoms which antibiotic or an antibiotic or antibiotics in general were prescribed on now if you're doing a history 
Um, I would have put the initial... Now, right, you've only done 181 words here, right? So this is right on the margin. Now, that word count, it, it doesn't matter. It's just a recommendation. 180 to 200, that's guidelines, recommendation, right? Um, so 200-ish plus words is fine as long as it fills out the story and there's no irrelevant information. Okay, so it's better to have slightly more that fills out the story, but not enough that leaves the reader asking questions. Okay, so condition is to start with the symptoms and the were prescribed. And so, so I would probably put that first. So, so she came with her like symptoms, antibiotics, and then she came back with a cough, or because it just seems like kind of straight. You know, so she's got a seven week history of a cough and she came with a flu on the 4th so without knowing today's date presumably I mean this is one thing about using these old old kind of notes it's kind of difficult to get the timeline established so anyway so we'll just leave it there though okay so seven week history she initially came I would have put that first and then put this cough okay on the 4th okay Mrs. Clark was uh, a febrile and a weight of 68 kilograms. Uh, okay. Well, the first reason I was detected, so it's been revealed. I was supposed to was unremarkable. Please note she was calm. Well, okay, I mean, but why do I have to note it? You could just say she was cancelled, or you discussed the potential diagnosis. Okay. Now, you could have put this in the introduction, in the opening. Does it matter that she's married? Why do I need this? You want me to do a bronchoscopy and a biopsy. So I don't know why it actually matters that she's kind of married. I mean, you know, does that really make a lot of difference? The important information for me is this. She's been reasonable, you know, 30, that's like, oh, that's like, nearly two packs a day for more than 30 years. I think that's more important for me to know than she is married or single. I would have been tempted, actually, to put this a little higher because it might ex explain what comes afterwards, you know, so I, so I don't have to wait until I get right down here to sort of find that she's been doing nearly two packs a day for more than 30 years. I mean, that's interesting. Okay, that might be, you know, interesting. But I think the most inter interesting information for me would be this. She's been a heavy, reasonably heavy, for more than 30 years. I think that's the more important information. So I would have maybe put that medical history, paragraph two, you know, to uh, explain that. Uh, Please note, Mrs. Clark has been a heavy smoker and has a family history of carcinoma, blah, 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 blah. She initially presented with flu-like symptoms. However, uh, she presented today with a non-productive cough and blah, 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 blah. You know, just to get the, um, the clarity of the timeline, I think that uh, would make it a little better. Uh, a bronchoscopy, broncos uh, bronchoscopy, and biopsy, and a biopsy. Your first assessment of condition. You could do. I would appreciate it if you could give a bron, you know, bronchoscopy and a biopsy. You could maybe reword that. But okay, so that, that isn't bad, really. That isn't so bad. I would just maybe make a couple of minor changes, you know, just for the sake of conciseness and clarity. And you could put a little bit more in the words, the word count. I say that 180 to 200, it's only a recommendation. What they say is, uh, I mean, and this isn't even kind of counted. What they say is that uh, 180, which is what it is here, 180 is, um, you know, anything below that. And they don't believe that you've included sufficient information, you know. For the reader, 200 plus, they consider that, um, well, and also they 
they have said in the OET official blog that they need at least 180 to properly assess your writing skills. You know, and that's exactly 180 there. 200 plus, possibly you may have included irrelevant information or you didn't um, summarize as concisely as you could have done. But still, and this is important, as they also mentioned, they don't even count the words. So you're, you're counting yours, examiner, they don't even count it. They don't, they don't actually count it. So it's kind of a waste of time if, if that's the reason why this is only 180 words, because you were thinking of a word count. Don't. That's essentially irrelevant. The most important thing is that the purpose is clear. Uh, I've got the purpose here. Where do I put it? Where is the criteria? Important thing is that, here it comes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The purpose is clear. That's the first thing. And sufficiently expanded. How well do you tell me that story? All right. I want you to do this. How will you tell me the story? So no important details are the key informations there. Okay, no irrelevant information, which I don't think we really have there. And how clearly and effectively you summarize and present it. The actual word count itself is unimportant. So I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, you can uh, put some comments in the group.